Hi and welcome, this is Lou, and on this channel we play with colour and line and form as we learn to draw and paint together. And in today's project we're going to be creating something really simple with simple blocks of colour, using them to learn about how watercolours work and how we can get the most out of them. I'm working in watercolour and I've got some coloured pencil as well, but that's not necessary, so work with what you have and I hope you'll paint along with me. Feel free to play with the ideas in today's project and just see where they take you. So today I'm going to make a really simple colour field painting. If you know of artists like Mark Rothko, who create big canvases with washes of one single colour across the canvas, maybe a stripe of another vibrant colour, or maybe two or three colours placed in blocks or rectangles next to each other. That's what I'm going to do today. I've got some watercolour paper here. This happens to be Archer's rough 100% cotton paper on a nice square block because I really like a square format. And in this series I'm leaning into the things that I like so I'm going to go for this square one. But any watercolour paper would work for this. I've got my set of watercolours here. Uh, this is my Winsor & Newton professional watercolour set which I've added a few extra colours into. It keeps growing as I discover more colours and, and add them to the set. I will put in the description box exactly which pigments I'm using, but the important thing is not to use exactly the same colours that I'm using, but to have a play with the colours that you've got, see what you like and see what resonates with you. I'm using a size 8 brush today, this is a Raphael Precision brush. I like it because it comes to a nice fine point, which is going to be helpful today because I am going to be painting squares and rectangles, so I want a nice point to get into the corners. If you have something like this which is like a flat brush, which comes to a nice kind of square point, that can be really helpful for getting into the corners as well, but this is what I'm using today. Um, I've got some water here, I've got one for warm colours, one for cool colours, um, and I've got a paper towel also got a little selection of coloured pencils which I'm going to add some detail in at the end. So I've added a little water into some of my pans to wake up some of my colours and I'm just adding them into the palette and I'm being fairly messy with them. And I'm going to put a blue, actually it's Payne's Grey, in this one here just to keep it a little bit separate and then the rest are going to be like more warmer colours. I want some a mix, I want some really bright vibrant colours like this um, which is quinacridone magenta and then I re want some really soft pastel shades and now you can get those by just adding lots of water into the vibrant tones and I will be doing that as well but you can also use some of the shades in your palette that kind of naturally have that kind of pastel quality and this lemon yellow is one of them. Um, so I'm just taking a little selection of colours and mixing them here and I'm going to start with some nice wet and watery colours so I'm adding quite a lot of water into them and then I'm just going to bring them over to my canvas, my not canvas but watercolour paper over here. Now I've not taped this but I do want to leave a nice board around the edge but I'm quite happy to freehand this. I think because I'm doing squares and rectangles it's nice if they're kind of hand drawn and I haven't actually sketched and gridded them all out precisely beforehand. So let's just take some of this colour and I'm just going to start roughly applying it in one area and you can see that what I've got here it's very pale, um, there's not a lot of colour in there at all and I'm putting it in a rough kind of um, rectangle shape. I've gone into a little bit more of the brighter pink there and some more of that lighter pink on the bottom and then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush just to straighten and smooth the edges out. And because I'm eyeballing things, and because I'm painting a rectangle and this is my first one, if I don't like the way a line's lying, I can always bring the rectangle out a bit further. See, so I went a little bit far on that corner there, so I can just neaten that edge up there, like that. And so now I've got this uh, rectangle here that I haven't really planned the size of it and it's got a lighter area and it's got some darker areas just because I've gone into different areas of my palette with my brush. I'm going to wash it off and go in with a slightly different colour. I've got a little bit of this 
Um, this is Venetian red with, oh look, a dog hair in it, lovely. Let's get rid of that. And lots and lots of water. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna create myself like a nice rough rectangle shape like this. And then I'm gonna use the tip of my brush just to straighten the edges out, neaten it all out. And I can even just touch the corners together of my two shapes. And because this one is still wet, I'll get a nice bleed between the two areas. And then let's have a little bit more pigment down here. There we go. So yeah, so that's neat enough, I think. And then this is a little bit pale, maybe it's a bit too pale. I can just dip my brush a little bit into a little bit more pigment and run it along an edge and just allow those colors to blend a little bit. And maybe that was a bit dark, but I'm quite liking the way that this is running. So I don't really want to touch it right yet. I'm going to move on again and I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to use some of this ye lemon yellow. So again, nice chalky pastel -y color. And I'm creating a rough rectangle shape. I'm not going kind of near my other ones to start with, just getting some color down in a kind of rough square rectangle. And then when I've pretty much got the shape I want, I go in a lot more carefully with the tip of my brush and paint in a kind of a neater edge. So there we go. So now I've got three areas which are still quite wet. I could go in and paint this one here and I'd probably get a little bit of a run between these areas. So I can decide whether I want that or not. I think what actually I want to do is I want to see what happens. This yellow square that I've just painted is really still quite wet. What happens if I go in with quite a strong color and paint another rectangle next to it? So I'm going in with some raw sienna and I just want a little one here. So I'm gonna just again, put down my little stripe of color use the tip of my brush to neaten it out. And then I'm gonna just carefully run the two edges together. And because that yellow was still wet, I've now got a yellow area with a darker yellow stripe next to it. And depending on how wet these different areas are, you might get a really smooth blend transition from one area to another. You might get kind of blooms and things coming into that area or you might end up with just kind of quite a nice smooth edge. And doing exercises like these help you to know what's likely to happen when you do that kind of thing. So I'm going to keep going with that and then I'll come back to you when I get to the next stage, which is kind of filling in all the gaps and I'll show you what I do for that.
So now I've kind of filled in lots of kind of alternate spaces. I haven't done any kind of lines apart from these ones here where I've painted one square next to each other um, because I wanted these to dry. So I've got some squares that have kind of got a really definite line between them. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of go to the ones that are dry and just test them out. You can just tap on with your finger. If it comes away a little tacky, it's still a bit wet. Um, and those ones that are dry, you can check all of these edges. Um, I can start painting the in-between bits. And I could just paint one kind of rectangle in here, but what I want to do is to break it up a little bit more. I don't know quite know how. I might break it up into two. I might break it up into four. Uh, I'll see. Um, a lot of this is about kind of using your intuition and just going with the flow, seeing what what works at the moment, testing things out and seeing what you like. So I've got this Payne's Grey in my palette and I haven't really used this yet. I used it to kind of make this pink bit a little bit kind of mauvey purple. But what I want to do is I want to use this to make some areas really kind of stand out and really dark. So the rest of the colours are kind of this, they're all kind of creamy coral colours. And areas that I'm doing in kind of darker, more unusual or more vibrant colours, I'm tending to make a little bit smaller. I think I want this even darker, so I'm going to go in with some more pigment. And again, I'm just using the tip of my brush just to neaten that out and to bring it up to the edge of the square next to it. Now, I've got to be careful at this point that I don't put my hand down in any areas that are wet. But let's get that looking as neat and rectangular as we can. Now while I've got this on my brush, I might use it somewhere else. These two areas are dried, that one's still a little bit wet. What I could do is just try it anyway and see what happens. I think this is going to run a little bit um, so I'm going to start out just by being careful to leave a little bit of a gap because I don't want it to run straight away. I can paint these two areas first. There we go. And then I'm going to paint this line here. And oh yes, you can see it's bleeding a little bit there. Now, I knew that was going to happen and I did it anyway because these are the little kind of effects that I really like from watercolour and you may think it looks a bit of a mess. If you do, then don't do it. Um, but this is the thing that I like to kind of encourage. So everything else in my um, picture is going to be quite neat. It's got lots of horizontal and vertical lines, but allowing the watercolour to do this kind of thing and just bleed in a couple of places and create some hard lines and some soft lines, like this lovely hard line kind of developing along here. And I could fix that if I wanted to, but I'm going to leave it because I quite like it. I don't want it to, to do that all over the place, but just in a couple of areas, just going to add a little bit more interest to my painting. So now I'm going to dot it around my painting again and filling in some of these whiter areas. I'm going to keep going um, and adding more and more until the whole thing is filled.
So now I've completely finished my painting. It's all dry. Um, so I've waited for a good long time for it to dry and I'm going to go in with an extra layer of detail. Now you could do this with any sort of thing. You've got lots of options for what you put on top of watercolour. So you could use the watercolours again and just add extra layers. Uh, you could do something like a gold paint or some gouache or um, other types of pens. I've got these pencils which I haven't really used very much so I'm going to use them on this project. I'm just going to choose some that I think work with the colours I've got down here. Um, so yeah, so I've got a few there. Oh, I think that one's maybe better than that one. Maybe that one. So yeah, so you've just a range of kind of peachy shades and then I've got, actually this is Payne's Grey pencil um, and I've got the Payne's Grey paint on here as well. So that's good. Now, to get lots of nice detail, I'm going to sharpen these, so I'm, I'm just going to do that now. So I did say that the level of detail I want to add is very, very subtle. So I'm just going to take the, a similar-ish colour to what I've put down here and just use that to define some areas. So I've got these two spaces here that are kind of pretty much the same colour. I think I could do with a little bit more in there. So... Let's just put some stripes, horizontal stripes, in that section. And because I'm using rough paper, the pencil is kind of skipping about a little bit and I'm getting it like a nice bit of texture, which is a good contrast for the watercolour. Also because the paper's a bit rough and it's got quite a bit of tooth, it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to keep your lines completely straight, which actually makes them kind of a little bit more interesting. So I've got this Payne's Grey and then I've got my Payne's Grey areas here. This one is looking a little paler than some of the others, so I can add some stripes onto this one too. And I'm constraining my stripes to the area where uh, yeah, the rectangle, so not the kind of the bleeding areas. Um, so I kind of define those a little bit more, but also I can see the difference. So I'm not kind of losing that interesting detail. There are some areas I don't really want to put pencil over the top of, like this area here and this area here are really interesting because I use lots of water in this one. And this one I use two different colours and let them bleed. So I'm going to leave those two, um, but I'm just going to go around and add a few more little areas of stripes just to some of the some of the rectangles not too many just a tiny bit i'm hoping that is subtle uh, a little amount of subtle detail that you probably won't see from a distance, but when you get in close and have a good look, there's all sorts of interesting things going on in this painting. So there's lots of gradients, there's flat areas, there's areas that are bleeding, there's, there's light areas and dark areas, and then there's areas with lots of detail. So thanks very much for watching along today. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. This video is part of a series that I'm doing um, eight weeks of videos all inspired or themed around patterns. So I've got some videos that are great for beginners to watercolour and some slightly more advanced ones too. And I'll be playing with some different art supplies as well. So I hope to see you again very soon. If you liked the video then please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more from me then do subscribe to the channel. If you really like the video and you want to support me then I've got a page on a website called Coffee where I accept donations and I post some behind the scenes vlogs as well. You can also find me on Instagram at Lou Rachel Davis. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon. Bye bye.